To quote the song, I Got My Mind Set on You by George Harrison, it's going to take patience and time. And for Kansas, I'm talking to the athletic department at KU, you got to give your head coach time. You didn't give Turner Gill near enough time, only two years, and you barely gave uh, Charlie Weiss um, over two years of time. And when you fired your coach after a short stint, you basically set your program back because the new coach now has to play with some other coaches, players, and a new philosophy, and that takes time, and that's just too much of a transition while you're trying to learn how to win. It makes it even more difficult. So Kansas to the athletic department, give David Beatty time for the air raid attack to work and give him time as well to show that he can recruit in the state of Texas where Beatty was a high school and college coach. Six of his top ten recruits this past season were from Texas. So maybe, you know, Kansas, Coach Beatty knows a little thing or two about getting his program to at least a respectable level. Well, we'll see if Ryan Wallace can get to a respectable level at QB. Last season, you can see the stats inconsistent, but, you know, the year of experience, maybe that will help. And hopefully for him, the wrist is feeling better after a uh, severe wrist injury this past spring. The running game was probably the worst part about Kansas. It wasn't all Keon Kenner's fault. The offensive line was talked about a little bit. You know, they share some of the responsibility as well. Kenner had 4.1 yards per carry a year ago. The receiving court definitely should be the biggest part of the upgrade for Kansas with the transfer of Lakey Avant Gonzalez, the one-time highly touted high school recruit coming from A&M to Lawrence and reunited, by the way, with Coach um, Beatty, who was a receivers coach at A&M two years ago. Now, talking about the left tackle, Jordan Shelley-Smith, he picked up valuable experience uh, last year. Ben Johnson, you know, the, the tight end that could block and catch passes. And two, what should help will be the uh, junior college transfer and center, Joe Gibson. The Jayhawk defense last year, oh boy, dead last out of the 128 teams in scoring they gave up 46 points per game. I know the offense was bad for Kansas, but the defense to me was even worse. And, you know, they put a lot of young guys last year. In fact, offensively and defensively combined, the Jayhawks, get this, um, you know, this year have nine sophomores expected to start. And some of them, by the way, started last year as a freshman. And that includes uh, Daniel Wise at the defensive tackle. The linebackers should be an area of upgrade because of the experience you had back, including uh, Joe Deneen, who had 76 tackles a year ago. Now, one of the best players on this entire team, maybe their best defensive player, is Fish Smithson, who definitely was Mr. Active from his defensive back spot. The free safety had 111 tackles. That's good because he was active, but that's a bad sign, too. If you have a safety that's making over 110 tackles, time now for my game to remember this year for Kansas. Might be that very first one. Best shot I think they're going to have in a win all year. So, Jayhawk fans, buy your tickets up now for that September 3rd clash against the Rams. That's right. Rhode Island, they were pretty much the FCS equivalent of Kansas last year, going 1-10 and and finishing dead last in the Colonial Athletic Association. No need to break down the rest of the Jayhawk schedule because I don't see them winning any of their remaining 11 games. I do like them to win the opener against Rhode Island, but again, it's going to be another season of learning for the Jayhawks. Perhaps next season should show their greatest amount of progression.